Did you know Super Awesome Mix has an app? Go to the Apple App Store today and download Super Awesome Mix. It's free. You could start creating and sending your own digital mixtapes in just a few clicks. Also, there's links to our Instagram account and a link where you can follow your favorite podcast. Speaking of which... Welcome back to another Super Awesome Mix. My name is Matt Sid, home alongside my co-host and co-founder of Super Awesome Mix, Samer Abu Salbi. Samer, how are we doing this week? Doing real well. It's um, that time again for new music. And this one has a lot of really cool stuff I got very excited about, especially uh, especially some of your picks. I was pretty happy with a lot of your picks, so good job. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? I was pretty happy with some of your picks, so so good job right back at you. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks so much. I feel like we're getting better at this, although I will say, and I, I think our longtime listeners will, will be attuned to this, I feel like, you know, at least your first few picks, I mean, we definitely would have been on like a bingo card for you of just like, of course you can include <laughs> this on a new music mix the second they have new music. I mean, it's true. It's true. There were some pretty obvious picks on my side in that regard, <laughs> but, but, um, I would be, I, I just couldn't not include them. But we'll talk about it. That's we'll fair. About it. That's fair. Um, all right. Well, let's well let's get into it. Yeah, let's start. So your first pick is um, "Lord Have Mercy" by Durand Jones. Yeah, I was not familiar with Durand Jones prior to this. Um, he this is his first solo album. He is normally part of a band called Duran Jones and the Indications, which is a great band name just in and of itself, right? I was like, okay, I like that. Um, but his whole album, I listened to this album and it's got such a cool, like throwback soul feel to it, right? In season one, we had the uh we had, you know, our friends from Stax Records come on and we did a lot of soul music with that one. Um, and so if you like that genre, I mean, this one is just right out of that, um, out of that world. So he's got such a great voice and, and all the music and instrumentation that goes along with it. Um, I picked this song just because I think it's a good, a good representation of, of kind of what, what he can do. Um, you know, it's not really, despite its title, it's not really like a spiritual or religious song. Um, but I mean, some of the songs have a gospel feel to it as well. Um, so I, I was just really excited about this album and I'm excited to go back and listen to some of his work with, uh, the indications to see if that's just a through line and this is just the music they turn out. Cause I think it's, uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. So, so definitely one worth checking out if you've never heard of him. Yeah, I had not heard him, and this was one of the ones top of my list of of like singers I was really happy to be introduced to because I've been obsessed lately with like new artists that sound like older music, you know, older artists. Um, I was recently on Jen's show, What Are You Listening To? And we were talking about that as well as like the influence of how, you know, all these people grew up listening to music from the 60s and 70s and 80s and now are kind of like, you know, musicians themselves and are reproducing some of the stuff that they were influenced by. So it's really cool how it's all like cyclical and, and um, kind of feeds itself. So I love that. But I, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the song. I was so happy to be introduced to it. Um, you know, I, I love, yeah, that soul feel like his voice is great. So I, I cannot wait to kind of dive into the whole album there. All right. Your first pick. And I'll just tell you, I when this song was released, I thought about just picking it and sending you a new music mix just to kind of scoop you on this one, because uh, I knew you'd be all over it. But um, <laughs> of course, you had to include this one. It is Rescued by Foo Fighters. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone would be worried had I not included it, right? We would have gotten <laughs> some DMs, some emails. Which, by the way, you know, feel free to follow us at Super Awesome Mix. Send us, send us a note. Um, but yeah, I mean, Foo Fighters has a new album out. Obviously, you know, last year they had to cancel their tour and kind of go on hiatus for a bit because of the death of Taylor Hawkins, their drummer. Um, so I, to be honest, was not expecting new music from them for quite some time. Um, so to have, you know, an album coming out, um, I'm, you know, pleasantly surprised by, I guess, let's put it that way. But 
Um, this really does feel like more of their classic sound, like Medicine at Midnight. Their most recent album was a little bit of a departure from typical Foo Fighter stuff. So this one definitely sounds much more of like their, you know, quote unquote mainstream uh, sound. Um, you know, obviously this one is referencing the death of Taylor Hawkins, like just in the opening lines. It came in a flash. It came out of nowhere. It happened so fast. And then it was over. Um, and Dave Grohl's on the drums on this track. So, you know, it's interesting to kind of see the influence that it's going to have on their music and on this whole album. Like, is it just this one track that's going to kind of reference them going through or is it going to be the whole album? So i um, very curious to see where it goes, but love this track. have been listening to it on repeat uh, ever since its release. Yeah, you're right. It definitely has that classic Foo Fighters uh, sound to it. And I agree with you on the lyrics. That's immediately what came to my mind when I heard those first lines was, you know, with the death of their longtime bandmate. And so that's, uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if that does become just a constant or if it's just, you know, I feel like different artists have done this differently. You know, when, when bandmates have passed away, uh, obviously some just don't even go on. But a lot of times they'll dedicate at least one track, but but some have gone further than that. Um, but yeah, this is this is a really good song. Really cool to hear Dave Grohl was on the drums. You know, the the line they kind of repeat over and over, I'm just waiting to be rescued. And then, you know, at the end, it kind of switches over to rescue me tonight. And there's kind of this desperation there. And, you know, I'm sure anyone who's ever lost someone, I think you kind of feel like you're, you're trying to snap out of it at some point. And then you're just kind of, hoping someone else can snap you out of it maybe. And I don't know, that's kind of what came to mind here when I heard the song. Yeah, no, that's a really good interpretation. I I think you're exactly right. Um, It is, it is like difficult to go through those stages. So yeah, really good track. and, And I'm curious to see what more comes from that. So track number three, your second pick is, um, common ground by Jack Harlow. Yeah, I think we're going to talk about this track probably longer than the track itself. It's like a it's like a minute 40. It's funny his whole right. his whole new album is like 10 tracks and the whole album's like 25 minutes long. <laughs> so <laughs> he he doesn't uh there's there's no one track that just kind of, you know, is is all that long, but um I picked this one. I really like the way he raps. Um, it's just, he's just got a really smooth delivery to him. And, um, the line that stood out here that uses the title of the song, he says, common ground is not that common, or maybe he says, ain't that common, but it's, uh, yeah, I feel like that was, that was well done. I was like a good turn of phrase. Um, and rappers are usually pretty good at that, but that's the, uh, that's the one that got me here in this, uh, this very short, but I think really effective rap song. Yeah, I, I love that you commented on the on the length of the song because I hit play, I started taking notes on it, and I was like, "Wait, where? I, what happened? I'm ready on the next track." <laughs> so fast, it's like made for TikTok generation. Like songs can't be longer than like a minute and a half. No, no one has time for that. Um, yes, I also called out just the repeated line, "Common ground ain't that common," because I I thought that was such a brilliant way to kind of sum up this, you know kind of the state of the world that we find ourselves sometimes in where, you know, it's like, oh, well, we must find common ground. And it's like, no, it's actually getting, seems to be getting harder and harder to find (laughs) that. (laughs) Almost impossible in some cases. Yes. Almost impossible. Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah, All right. It's a good track. I enjoyed it. Your next pick, and this is a much longer than, than Jack Harlow's work. um, But uh, you know, one you featured on the mix before meeting the master by Greta Van Fleet. Yeah, another like throwback feel of a track. Um, And they have, you know, new music coming out. um, So I'm excited for that. But I have started to run to this song because I find that it's actually a really good song to run to. It just has that kind of like build up. Um, You know, we've talked about Greta Van Fleet before sounding like uh, like Led Zeppelin. A lot of people go to Led Zeppelin. I think you mentioned sounding like Rush uh, just from the vocals, like that kind of really high nasally sound like that, that comes through. I love that. But yeah, like. I I think it's really cleverly done, um, especially because, you know, he never speaks to any specific kind of religion here, but there's definitely like a religious or like a a fervor element to it. You know, it's like the magic of meeting the master and then you can just apply whatever the master means to you. Could be the head of a religion, could be God, could be the universe, could be whatever. Right. Um, 
but just like the the feelings of quote unquote meeting the master. So I thought it was really interesting in that regard. But really, I just love how much this song kind of rocks. And and again, having that kind of 70s filter applied to it, <laughs> if you will. So I'm I'm excited to see where the rest of this album goes. I, I always enjoy music from them. Yeah, this is uh, it really is amazing how they keep churning out songs like this that are just like something out of the 1970s or something you'd find on like a classic rock station, but then kind of slightly updated, um, obviously with with better sound uh, than there was in some of those original recordings. Um, It's it's a really cool song. I really like it. I kind of got to wonder with the way they've been able to recreate this stuff that that sounds so much like these other bands. You know, if you asked AI to make a Led Zeppelin song or a Rush song or something like that, how much would it line up with something Greta Van Fleet is turning out? I know we're going to have to have a whole discussion of AI music because there's like AI Drake out there that's causing quite the stir. Yes. Like, <laughs> it's really wild what's going to happen with music and, and how the industry catches up to that. Because you're right. I think you could just ask an AI to generate like a 70s song that's got a modern feel to it. And it would probably produce a band similar to, <laughs> to Greta Van Fleet. I mean, even if they didn't perform it, if they were able to just like write a song, like lyrics to it and right. the band just had to play to it. I think it's good. Yeah. That's, that's probably a whole, it's own it's own episode somewhere down the line where it's like, this is becoming a problem. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong. We love technology here, and that's going to bring me to track number five, <laughs> which is Don't Get Me Wrong by Matchbox 20. That is a great transition right there. That's well done. Um, and not planned. So also good. You know, do that on the fly. Um, all right. So Matchbox 20 hasn't had a new album in like 10 years, and uh, they released you know one single off their new album a couple weeks ago. This is the second single off their new album. I thought this one had much more of the kind of old Matchbox 20 feel to it. I was a big fan of theirs back in the 90s and then, you know, even into the early 2000s when they were still putting out a couple albums. Um, but they they took a long break. Um, some called it a breakup, but um, now they're kind of back together. And um, I, I don't know, I really like this song. I thought, you know, I've always thought Rob Thomas was a really good songwriter. And um, this one, you know, stood out to me again because of the lyrics. And and a lot of it's kind of about a disagreement, you know, in, in some sort of relationship, right? So you could chalk it up to a marriage or or whatever it is. But, you know, then he, he's got this line in the middle. It's like, I know you think I'm gone, but I'm all in. Don't get me wrong. Right. And, and I think I, I've heard about like myself in my own life, you know, a couple of people's marriages breaking up recently. And, and I do think I, I love how this song hits on there's going to be disagreements in relationships, you know, and, and you're not going to agree on everything, but it's like, doesn't mean you're out altogether on it. It's just kind of, that's the nature of it. And, and you do have to work at it for things to work. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, so I thought it was just a great song lyrically and, and it just sounds, you know, had, you know, we talk about a throwback sound. This isn't even from like a different band. It's like, this is the band that had the sound. 20 years ago and they're just bringing yes. it back <laughs> no totally i i had that same feeling whenever i listened to it. i was like a i had no idea that they had new music so i was really excited b um this sounds just like them i was like that's great like i love matchbox 20 i don't want them to change or sound any different so um i was really excited to listen to that and, and i really did enjoy the lyrics yeah i like a lot of the contradiction here um, even in the opening line i'm feeling calm but i'm never relaxed like i i really like that um, I feel like sometimes I can definitely relate to that um, where you're like, yeah, I think I'm calm, but like I'm still on edge. Like, <laughs> right, so I'm not really, right. but it's, it's interesting. So yeah, I love that. I love the songwriting and, and the sound is great. All right. Your next track, no surprise here. Okay. Uh, it is mermaids by Florence and the machine. <laughs> yes. She now has, I think like <laughs> 20 different versions of this album. Um, they're just keep coming. There's like, the original that came out and then like there was the Apple version and like a deluxe version. And now there's like the, the, you know, the universe, the dance uh, fever universe or something that she's calling it. It's fantastic. Um, this originally was cut from the album. So um, like, I think she ran out of time and wasn't able to release it. So then did it as a single after the release. 
And I just love this song. Like I was immediately addicted to it, of course, but it's such a dark song. Uh, the bass line is so good and it's, you know, worth listening to as loud as uh, as you can. And always, keep, you know, keep a mind up for your ears. They <laughs> pay attention to their health. You need them. Um, but yeah, I love the sense of being in like a cheerful oblivion. Like she keeps, you know, repeating that like. And she really dedicated the song to kind of her past self. She mentions how she used to be a drunk English girl um, and would go out at night and, you know, like basically just get into this state of cheerful oblivion. So I really like that. And I think it's really well done where it has that that kind of dark undertone to it. Um, so it's awesome. I'm very excited that she was able to release this. Yeah, this the only word the word I kept coming back to when listening to the song was just like epic. Right. Like I imagined if you take away the vocals, this could be playing over some final battle scene in, in like, right. you know, a Star Wars movie or or some other type movie like that. It was just such a cool sound. And then when you add her vocals to that and of course, she's got such an amazing voice. I was like this this song. I mean, it just kind of blew me away because just the combination of those two things. Um, and you're right. Like I did. I had it on kind of it was because it doesn't start out really loud, right? And so right. I had turned it up at the beginning of this song. And then like as the volume of the song increased, I didn't change it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Um, but you're right, it's gonna it might hurt your ears if you do that pretty consistently <laughs> over time. <laughs> the last thing I'll call out is uh she mentions she, you know, this is a quote from her, and she's talking about the song. And she said how she imagines these um, English women to be turning into mermaids that come to shore once a year and drink and dance. But in order to do that, they have to sacrifice a human heart. So it kind of turns into a bit of a bloodbath like a lot of my songs. <laughs> and I just love that. <laughs> because She's right. Like a lot of her songs do kind of end up being a bit of a bloodbath, which is amazing. <laughs> it's good <laughs> self-awareness, awesome. though, right? On her part. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> All right. Um, track number seven, your next pick, Trees Grow High by Teleman. Yeah, this is a synth pop band out of England. And um, again, if you like Brit pop and uh, kind of an 80s sound to it, we're doing a lot of throwback stuff today. I don't think I realized that listening to this mix originally. Yeah, but, we are. But as I'm listening to this, I'm like, this has a throwback sound too. Um, but yeah, the, this whole album, I, I just felt like had such a such a cool vibe to it and um i love the lyrics that they kind of go over and over in this one stupid little boy crazy little girl the song's over but you still keep on dancing and uh you know that that's kind of a running theme here this stupid little boy and crazy little girl they're kind of being corrected by those out outside of sort of their little world um but yeah just it was a really kind of neat song it's it's only a few minutes long but um i think these guys are definitely worth checking out yeah, this was one that I, I enjoyed as well. And they reminded me almost of like MGMT. Um, definitely got the 80s vibe from it. Also got like an early 2000 vibe from it because I think of like MGMT. Um, so it has that like really cool kind of, you know, again, throwback feel to it. Yeah, I mean, at least our show releases on Thursday. So we could just call it like a throwback <laughs> episode. Throwback <laughs> this Thursday. one may have. Yeah, need the tag throwback Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, your next pick. It is Eat the Acid by Kesha. Yeah. Um, Kesha's transformation from like her first song, you know, and spelling your name with a dollar sign to like now singing the way that she does is really remarkable. Um, <laughs> By the way, I wasn't fully aware of this transformation. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's listen <laughs> to some Kesha. Then I'm like, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> right yeah no it's incredible um she has she has quite the voice like i th i think you know we've talked a lot about this a l oftentimes pop stars do have a lot of talent and they get kind of deridden for you know being like oh you're just a pop singer but it's like underneath a lot of the production value is a very talented human being so um she's certainly in that in that bucket in my mind and i think this song is like again really dark like it's such a dark song um, it comes as like she's singing a warning that basically her own mother gave to her, which is like, don't take acid because it will change you forever. So if dare was still a thing, if you if you're old enough to remember dare programs in school, I feel like this would have been a great theme song for them. 
It's like, look, even Kesh is telling you don't take the acid. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, Sam dares a sponsor this week. I forgot to, I forgot to include uh, oh, that on the rush. <laughs> yeah, they're still around. They're oh, still around. Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're paying us a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's not true. That's not true. But I don't know if they're around or not. Um, yeah, this song was so intense. And again, it just threw me for a loop when, again, I'm expecting this kind of fun Kesha song. And again, by title, I'm like, well, okay, this might be something different. But then, yeah, the whole right. thing was just completely different than what I expected. Um, but it's really good. I mean, it showcases... Exactly. Like you said, she has such a great voice that I think was probably overlooked in the past, but she really puts it on display here. Um, and yeah, just just has a really strong kind of uh, she's just getting she's getting her message across. I would say <laughs> there's there's no doubt. Yes. Um, with with her voice and the music here. I mean, you're that that you're not going to forget this one. No, you're definitely not. It has like an earwormy quality, and and I, it's just a very unsettling song. Yes, I found, but yeah. one that I that I, yeah, it's very unsettling. But I kept wanting to play it over and over again. It was interesting. It's interesting. Um, all right, track nine certainly less unsettling. Um, you know, different <laughs> different tone here, and this is "I'm Not Pretty" by Megan Maroney. Yeah, I had to include a little country music. I've been I've been getting I've been trying to find new country artists because I think early on in this show's run, I was like, I don't really like new country. So I've really made an effort to kind of go find some country artists that I do like. Megan Maroney, this album I think is so good. Um, she had a little bit of TikTok fame last fall with a song called Tennessee Orange. She's from Georgia, and that song's kind of about, you know, she likes this guy so much that she's willing to wear Tennessee orange. So a little bit of SEC uh, reference there if you're, right. if you're a football fan. But, um, but yeah, this song, and I've listened to the song, I don't know, probably half a dozen times since I found it. But I just love how she's just singing about, you know, an ex's uh, new girlfriend kind of finding her online. And uh, accidentally, like, ta- you know, tagging a, a picture, accidentally double tapping a picture and, you know, trash talking her to her friends. And, and you know, the, the, the line that the title comes from is she says, yeah, go ahead and keep telling telling yourself I'm not pretty. <laughs> yeah. And I just love yeah, that love line that. where it's just like, yeah, OK. You know, I mean, you know, I know I know you're checking me out and, and I know you've got a problem with me, but but that's not accurate. And um I don't know. I just thought it was so well written and so well delivered. Um, and the whole album, I think she does a really good job in this album, uh, including uh, there's one you probably appreciate called like, I write sad songs for sad people. That's the last track, but it's something <laughs> she kind of references, but it's uh, that's another really strong one too. That's awesome. I'll have to give that one a listen. Um I, I really enjoyed this one. I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect with the title of I'm not pretty, you know, I thought like, oh, this is going to be like a, a self takedown, but it's actually the complete opposite. It's like really more of like an anthem for self-esteem and not caring what other people think. Um, because, you know, she sings here, give me a break, learn to sew, bake a cake, take a walk. And while you're at it, get lost, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just like a do literally anything else than pass the phone around and, and tear me down. Um, I love that. Yeah. And I, I also really appreciate that, like, you know, obviously we are getting to that point now where songs are referencing things like Instagram and, you know, double tapping photos right. and like all that kind of stuff to where in like 50 years or 100 years, like who knows what interactions are going to be like and what, you know, the like technology media is going to be like. And so will, you know, future generations listen to this song and be like, what what are they talking about? Double tap a, a spring break throwback. What does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, that will be interesting. At what point does that become dated to where kids are like, what is she talking about? Does that even exist anymore? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> All right. Your next song, it is called Too Many Things by the Linda Lindas. Yes. Shout out to Tyler Jenke for introducing me to the Linda Lindas. He was uh, a guest on the first season of our show. He um, was formerly the editor for Rolling Stone Australia. Great friend of the show. He's awesome. So, um Linda Linda's is like a, a modern punk band, basically, but like with like a Gen Z spin on it. So they are a lot of fun. Um, the album that I really got hooked on from them is called Growing Up. Um, they're based out of L.A. And I just love like 
I don't know. I just love kind of this modern punk, you know, it's like kind of making a revival again um, after, you know, at least in my own sphere of music um, disappeared for a while. So I'm excited to kind of bring it back in. But I like the song. It's got a good energy. I really like um, the line too many things due to too many things hovering in my head. It's like there's too many things because of just too many things. And <laughs> I just love that kind of self definition. Um thing because i think that's again something we can all relate to sometimes we were like there's just too much going on because there's just too much going on <laughs> it's great well and i like how they in the lyrics here they they started out a little more detailed as as of too many this or too many that and then it eventually at the end just becomes too many things too many things which i'm like that it kind of uh speaks to your point there of just there being too many things i don't even want to name them anymore right it's just kind of overwhelming and then you know, they kind of have this fast guitar beat, you know, over it, which is kind of adds to the sort of unnerving quality of it. It's it's not nearly as unnerving as the Kesha song. Um, this one's a little bit more fun, like you said. Um, kind of reminded me, the guitar riff reminded me of uh, We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's. Uh, it took me forever mm, to, for that like to that. pop into my head because I was like, God, I feel like I've heard this before. But yeah, but they're, yeah, they definitely seem like a really fun group. So um, yeah, this was this was a good pick. Nice. All right. Your final pick, track 11 on the mix, is The Dumb Song by AJR. <laughs> yeah, our old friends at AJR um, haven't released an album. They keep releasing these singles. Uh, last year it was uh, The DJ is Crying, and uh, now it's The Dumb Song. Um, love the title here. And uh, this song is just great. You know, it's got the horns and the, the same instrumentation that they usually have. So you just it's just going to put you in a good mood musically. But then early on, I mean, the lyric is, you said with certainty, I may be the dumbest person that you've ever seen. And then he goes on to write how freeing this is, because then if he's so dumb, he doesn't have any responsibility. So it's like, well, when the world's falling <laughs> apart, don't call me. I'm, I'm too dumb. And OK, when it's time to break up, I guess I could just send you a text message because I'm just dumb. And <laughs> I just <laughs> I, I love how he takes this insult and just turns it into this kind of a uh, way to empower himself to just kind of be free of, of any responsibility. Yeah, I love that. That had to have been some kind of personal experience. of his. <laughs> had to have um, been. Yes. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah. I love that so much. That was exactly the line I was going to call out um, because it reminded me of a conversation we had on on a recent recording where it's like someone left some snarky comment. And instead I was like, hey, that I, you think that was <laughs> an insult, right. but that was actually a huge compliment. Thank you. Yeah, they said we were doing stuff just like Pitchfork and we were both like, hey, all right, high five. Huh? We're nailing it. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I, I think they meant that as an insult. And we're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome um yeah i love this and I, I this one like really goes heavy i feel like with the horn sound they almost sound like like a ska band or yeah something. yeah um, definitely which is an which is another great throwback like uh, <laughs> bring back ska <laughs> obviously that's the solution to all our problems it is just gonna need a little bit more ska in our life um well, um, I'm just going to tell everyone before I read this last title, the song is not as bleak as it sounds, okay? But I was a little worried when this was our last song that you presented here. Um, it's called We're All Gonna Die by Joy Aladokun and Noah Kehan. Yes, I know the title really does sound like it's going to be some super sad, morose song, <laughs> but... Um, but it's great. It I I had not um, listened to her music, so this was a new introduction for me. Was just kind of clicking around or trying to like you know hear new new stuff. Um, I think it's a beautiful song, and I think it's also a really nice reminder that like yes, we are all going to pass on uh, from this life into whatever comes next. You know whatever you believe. Um, so you know do what do what you love, do what matters, um, and. <laughs> It's like that kind of classic semi happy sounding song covering like the dot, you know, somewhat dark topic of, of mortality. So it was definitely Sam or bait in that regard. <laughs> but what I really love is the the line in verse two um, where it's I write a song. It's got a couple of deep lines. It's BS. Don't it make me sound sort of wise? Like, I just think it's great where, um, you know, they're kind of like poking at themselves of like writing a song with a couple of deep lines but it's you know it's whatever like <laughs> but doesn't it make them sound cool you know it sounds smart so 
thought that was funny. I enjoyed that a lot. Those are the exact lyrics I called out, but I also included the next two lines where they say, but I'm pissing in the dark and I'm hoping I hit the bowl. I'm afraid of what I can't control, which I was like, those are a couple of deep lines right there. I mean, that's well done. (laughs) A lot of guys out there could probably relate to that one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this, this one, I, I thought, you know, again, I went into it and I was like, man, is this just going to be a bummer to finish off the mix? But it's really not. And it kind of falls in the same vein as too many things where it's really more about kind of how overwhelming things could be. And this idea mm-hmm. that we are all going to pass away is, is maybe a pretty good little reset. If you are feeling overwhelmed, that can kind of, you know, put you back in a better place just because, um, you know, not, not that you want to sit there and think about death, but I think more in the vein of like, it, it kind of puts things in perspective and that, that things aren't as important as maybe you put, you make them out to be in your mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's like a, right. Good, good reminder of perspective and, and reset and focus on hopefully what's most important in your life and all of that. So that's why I wanted to put that as the last track. Well done. Well done. All right. Well, there you have it. Another super awesome mix for your collection. This time, new music for the month of May. Like Samer said earlier, you can follow all things Super Awesome Mix at Super Awesome Mix on Instagram. And we'll get to work on our next mix. So for Samer, this is Matt, and we'll see you next time. Super Awesome Mix is brought to you by DLM. Make shopping easy with DLM, the one-stop shop for all your casual clothing needs. Shop DLMSupplyCo.com and enter the promo code AWESOME at checkout to save 15% off your first purchase. That's DLMSupplyCo.com.